August 3rd, 2023. This is the S&P 500 E-Futures Mini on the 2000 tick chart on the Ninja Trader 8 platform. This is what the highs and lows look like. Also, just want to point out that you don't have to watch this whole video. I wouldn't. Just go down to the descriptions below if you want to see where I saw setups to compare against yourself, as well as where I took my trades. The trades I took on the chart are these ones that are boxed. So there wasn't really any economic, excuse me, I take that back. There was actually some economic data that came out, which was the unemployment claims, which always comes out on Thursdays, came out at 530 Pacific Standard, which is right around here. Now, it's hard to argue that it created this big surge up, but this big surge up is actually only about six points, roughly. And then another piece of economic data that came out was at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard, which is right about here. And it was the ISM Services PMI. And it looked like, I guess you could argue that it created this sell-off, but you know, for the most part, it didn't really do too, too much. This is the highs and lows of the pre-market. The highs were here. It never really got tested or touched. And this is the low of the pre-market, but you could argue there's probably another low right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw another low line right here. Uh, but it really didn't seem to matter. I mean, it created maybe potentially a fail breakout. And it reminded me a little bit of another day, which was, I think, uh, Tuesday, which was kind of just in this tight little range. Of course, Tuesday, you can see, was a very, very slow price action. The day the price action was so-so, I would say. There were some trades here and there. I took a total of three trades. Unfortunately, I lost in all three. Uh, a couple of them I thought would have worked out. And I think the third one, Maybe one of them I thought would have worked out, and then the other two or the other one definitely was uh, foolish. For sure, I know the third trade wasn't a very clean setup of any kind. I pretty much just took it. I think it was kind of teetering on revenge trading. So I'm going to go through the trades now. It looked like it was just a big sell-off. Popped around within this, I would argue, kind of a trading range in this section. Broke out, two legs up, kind of traded in this consolidation, sold off, and then, well, pretty much didn't really go anywhere. So. Go into the trades now. So this is the pre-market. Pre-market here, there was really no news. It was just a sell-off for whatever reason the market decided to sell off. It was chopping, created some potential entries, but I'm not awake to trade here. So I don't worry about missing a trade, but I do watch it just to see if there was a setup to understand if this was actually happening in regular trading hours, I might've taken it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and move forward. This, uh, you can ignore this blue line right now. This blue line, I thought might have been a potential top of a trading range, but it acted as a point of resistance for, you know, maybe one or twice. So I'm gonna actually just go ahead and, well, I'll go ahead and delete this for now. It didn't really act that, act as too much of an important factor in taking a trade. Price is open and there was already a sell off. I saw several well throughout the day you see a bunch of second entries but the second entries weren't high probability so i definitely had to leave them alone the first setup i saw was well uh, before i get into that it looked like it kind of double bottomed here this is the pre-market lows and you could argue that this created a new low here which is pretty close to the pre-market lows so anytime prices come back to this region i'd be a little bit more careful so i did draw this blue line once it touched the second time and i was just kind of being aware that once it hits the pre-market low, there's a potential it might actually break through and it actually affected one of my trades. So here's the first setup I saw. It creates a new high, very visibly new high, creates a first entry long, pulls back, creates a second entry long. Now, when I saw this, I thought this is the um, second entry long. However, this signal bar isn't very good. It's too bearish, but I was basing off of this possible support because you could argue, not necessarily this triple test, but there is some kind of support, a reaction by prices here. And I drew this, and I think this is probably what threw me off because this isn't really a clean channel, but I saw this because this is just really whippy right now. It already broke out down here, came back up, broke out a second time. So this channel in hindsight, wasn't really a clean channel to base this breakout and two pushes up. So when it broke out and two pushes up, I saw this as support and I thought this is a second entry long. I jumped on it, but I didn't factor in that this is a terrible signal bar. So you can see my entry is right here. Comes down, it doesn't stop me out. And then I had my stop one tick below, actually this guy, which is kind of creating the triple test right here, the triple bottom here. It comes down, takes me out. And then it didn't matter if I had actually kept it one tick below because I just wanted to keep my risk reward a little bit tighter. And knowing that, I should have just been more wary of this setup. 
However, as, as I said, if I did keep it one tick below, it's debatable whether it would have stopped me out on this candle, but for sure it would have stopped me out on this candle. So nevertheless, it really wasn't a clean setup. Bad signal bar. I was just believing that this ascending channel is going to come back up and push a second time. So that's how I saw first push up. I thought I'd make a second push, but that isn't valid for this setup. Just because the whole overall context was a little noisy, wasn't very clear. Then the second setup I saw was it makes an yellow, makes a first entry short, pulls back, it makes a second entry short. I saw this in real time, but I hesitated and I wasn't sure because this one, I was thinking, I think I was just like a little bit uh, extra cautious now. And that affects my trading when I take a loss. I probably missed trades that were viable. And I think this was a potentially good trade. Reason being is this is a very good signal bar. I like that it made a new low. It pushed up once, pulled back, and then pushed up a second time immediately. But it got stopped out on this double top, this micro double top. But you could also see it as a potential triple test because for whatever reason, it could not break this level here. And this support doesn't even factor in at this point. However, if you did want to factor it in, you could also say that it had trouble breaking clean and closing above this potential support, that act, which is now a resistance, which acted as support previously. So when it closed here, there's also enough room for a quick scalp before you get to the bottom here. So this is actually a potentially good trade that I unfortunately missed out on. So I had to keep waiting. The second setup I saw was a second entry long here. I count this as a new high, because you could actually say this as a new high here. The first entry long, second entry long, then the count resets. And I did draw this descending channel at this point. I like that it had good confirmation on the top side. Bottom side is pretty decent confirmation as well. So when it came down to here, what I saw was, okay, this is clearly in a channel. I saw a new high here, first entry long, pulls back, second entry long. I thought this was a pretty decent signal bar. It's bouncing off the bottom of this descending channel. Also on top of that, that's one key entry point. I noticed that it is bouncing off the bottom of this pre-market low. Now, keep in mind, I also was aware of this potential uh, new low here that was created not in the pre-market, but in the regular trading hours. When I saw this, I saw I saw two potential key entries. And I like the signal bar. I said, okay, well, there's probably some kind of support here because it was a little bit of a support here. The bodies weren't too far from you know breaking through. You know, They did come down and touch here. And here, this could have been a fail breakout. So what I saw was, okay, I like this trade. I'm thinking potentially is a good trade to try to take a trade. Excuse me. I just repeated myself. I saw this as a potential good setup to take a trade. So I actually entered, try to be conservative. I entered right at the highs, not one tick above, right at the highs. I'm thinking at least there's enough room to scalp out to the EMA or even potentially up to the top of this downward channel. Of course, I'm wrong. It flashes down and takes me out. And that, that one was kind of um, kind of a bummer because I thought I read the chart correctly. The one thing I have to admit though, it is counter trend trading because at this point, the mark is telling you I'm selling off, I'm chopping within this range. I don't make it back to the top or even test the potential you know, range up here. And I'm coming back down again. So it was something to be more cautious of. Ideally, I probably should have waited for a higher low confirmation that you know is going to move back up, but I didn't. So this one is based upon this loss, I'm pretty sure is based upon inexperience and not taking into account this counter trend. This line down here might actually be the one that comes into play. So yes, it comes down, touches, and then it continues downwards. So even if I had a bigger stop loss, I would have lost anyways. So this is my second trade, which is also red. I saw this as a failed breakout potentially of this larger trading range where this blue line would have been and then maybe where this midline is potentially i'm in this big trading range even though the pre-market highs and lows are creating something up here so i just kind of kept that in mind i said okay there's a potential fail breakout but there's no clean entry to take yet first entry short here i see a second entry short so i saw the second entry short unfortunately this signal bar isn't very good it's kind of neutral it did bounce it just, prices just came off the bottom in a potential breakout, fail breakout. And I decided, well, okay, I should wait for a lower high confirmation of possible failure. Excuse me. Let me take that back. As a first entry short, second short, I was thinking if I want to go short, I need to find a lower high to confirm that this is actually going down. However, if I'm thinking this is a reversal, I need to find a higher low. 
this should be a failure. And as you can see, it comes up next. But here, I don't know that this failure is actually occurring. It could still be a true second entry short coming up. Now, this is a pretty decent signal bar. Now here, as soon as it breaks up above, this is really truly confirmed failed second entry short, and it created a higher low for the first second entry short. So when I saw this, I felt it was a little bit aggressive because I wasn't quite sure. <clears throat> then I saw this. I saw a hidden second entry long because it's a new high. It's a first entry long pulls up. The second entry long is created on the same candle right here. It pulls back. It actually goes below this candle, and it breaks right back up. So it's actually first entry long. And the way I counted it is it broke down below, and it went right back up. So it's a second entry long that was hidden. So when I saw this, I said, this looks like a good trade. It traps some people that went short. Unfortunately, it didn't break above here. Kind of created a double top. I thought, okay, I wanted to maybe <clears throat> wait for a confirmation. So when I saw this next red candle, it flashed down. I'm thinking, hmm, do I really know that this is actually going to continue upwards now? Or is this a weird fake out? So when it topped forward, I actually decided that it was this is good enough to break through. Now, I will admit, when I saw this, this was based on emotion because I just had two losing trades and I was eager to try to reduce the losses. So I actually entered here thinking I'm going to reduce the risk, enter a little bit in the middle of here and it will break out because I also saw this as an ascending channel. It broke out once. It didn't quite make a new extreme, pulls back. It's probably going to next candle move up and let me get my scalp as long as I keep my entry backed up to reduce my risk. Now, that all sounds... I guess, reasonable in the moment, but it's not actually a valid setup because this is me just assuming a bunch of things and for the most part, projecting what I think the market's going to do and what I want it to do instead of what the market's actually telling me. So keep in mind, enter here, it drops around. This is probably a good indication to me like, hey, this isn't a trade that's gonna work out. I should probably scuttle it because this wasn't a very good valid reason in the first place. And of course, it flashes down and takes me out. One tick below the stop down here. Tops around. This, ironically, may, let's see, this, ironically, probably would have let me scalp out. It's hard to definitively say because it's a 1550. And I would have wanted to get out at 16, probably 1700 and ensure I got a full six point scalp. But, you know, it was hard. To see it's getting choppy this trade shouldn't have happened in the first place and i was definitely allowing the emotions to affect my good judgment so when i took this loss right here i decided that's it i am actually going to wrap it up not take any more trades but i will keep watching diligently to see where setups were so that kind of called it a day for me then prices just continue chopping down breaks out comes back up i see a failed second entry short new low here first entry short second entry short now, the second entry short is confirmed here. There's potential for failure. Had this candle actually come all the way down to the bottom here or touched the EMA, I think I would have felt more confident taking the trade. But it looks like it is having some kind of support at the top of this trading range. But this trading range is a little iffy because it broke out here, overshoot, made almost a symmetric overshoot, then it came back up. So it could still be a fail breakout and it could be a true second entry short. So assuming it's a failure, you don't know until you see this candle flashes up. Take a trade here. I think I would have wanted to put it one tick above here. And as you can see, you would not have gotten filled. But that's okay, because this is a little bit of a tricky setup. And prices continue chopping. It moves up. I draw this channel going up. It has good confirmations. One, two, three, and four, five here. But pretty much it does touch three times. And here it touches twice, but it has this overshoot. So now I'm careful wondering if it's actually going to have a move right back into the channel. It looks like it's struggling. It moves back into the channel, so I'm a little bit cautious now because it might break out to this side. However, what's coming into play is the EMA could act as a support, so I'm just waiting carefully. Never really comes back to the EMA, and then it finally does, but it doesn't close below. And so it's just in this weird choppy range. So I draw this channel, using this range here. It's moving sideways. So at this point, I'm thinking it came down, it bounced around. It might make it back to this midline because this midline could be actually a range here where this midline and then where this blue line is 
But again, I'm not 100% sure. Things are looking pretty wicky. There's like too many wicks and bodies are too small. So I know if I were still trading, I'd have to just sit it out and wait. <clears throat> it keeps chopping. It gets kind of noisy. Then it flashes up. I see a potential fail breakout right here. I also see a potential second entry short because I see a new low here. First entry short. Boom. Second entry short. The second entry short is a good signal bar for the second entry short. But knowing that this is a fail breakout, potentially could be a breakout pullback. I was just waiting because the EMA is coming into play. So when I saw this fail breakout, I said, yes, it's a fail breakout, but it's not worth taking this trade yet. And if I did take the second entry short, it felt aggressive because even though the signal bar is pretty decent and there's enough room, it is <clears throat> a little bit kind of like counter trend trading. If this fail breakout was actually on this side, on this clear move that's going up, I think I would have felt more comfortable taking a long if this was kind of a mirror image down here. But knowing that, I wasn't sure, so I waited. Looks like it would have worked. Comes down. This is acting as some kind of support in this range. Pops around some more. Moves up. And it starts going up. So I draw the second channel here. And now I'm thinking there's one leg up. Pull back. Consolidation. A second leg up. So I actually had something like this at one time. About right here. And then here. And just wondering if it's actually going to make a completed move. Prices continue moving up. It looks like it's consolidating again. So it has, throughout the whole day, there's been some pushes, consolidation, pushes, consolidation. It's happening again. And I'm just waiting patiently. I don't see a good clean setup. These candles with the bodies are too tiny. So I just didn't feel comfortable. Prices break out, comes back, becomes a breakout pullback, and continues down. It falls into this channel now, but I don't see a good clean setup that I like. Mm. Comes up, I test this, and I do see this now. I see a new high, first entry long. This creates a second entry long. However, when I was watching this, I wasn't necessarily thinking going long, but when this occurs, you do have a confirmed second entry long, but this signal bar is terrible. Now there is a possible trade. If you decide that you saw this and you saw this close, I would have tried to drop my entry one tick above here. What is also going for it is there's a triple test, one, two, three, and this is coming back down. And now EMA is getting a little choppy. So you could consider this a potential trading range, triple test, trigger bar is good, signal bar is terrible. So I would have put my entry potentially down here if I wanted to take this trade. Nevertheless, I thought this was more of an aggressive trade. As you can see here, if I had my entry here, I would have gotten filled, but it would have felt more comfortable than trying to put one tick above here. One tick above here, sure, would have ensured a winning trade, but with my experience, which is not you know that that deep at this point, I wasn't sure that this is a setup that was worth taking yet. So then I also see a second entry short. It's a new low here. First entry short pulls back, makes a second entry short. So this second entry short, I thought, okay, this is a possible trade. It's kind of coming up. It was rejecting the top of the trading range. It if it closed a little bit higher, would have felt more comfortable coming down because it looks like he already moved almost halfway through the trading range. So I was a little nervous about looking at this. It has a good signal bar of this guy. EMA is flattening. So I thought, you know, I should probably wait to see if there's some kind of higher, excuse me, higher, uh, lower high confirmation. You don't quite get it to about here, but then it flashes up. I actually saw this as a failed breakout potential right here. And it failed second entry, a second entry short on the visual because I saw this as one leg up, pulls back, second leg up. But when this flashes down, I have a confirmed failed breakout, second entry short on the visual because technically on the per account, you have one entry, then second entry short, then technically have a third entry short. But I saw it as two legs, visual second entry short. And I thought <clears throat> if this candle had closed a little bit more bearish, inside the range more completely. I mean, it already did, and I would have felt more comfortable. So I waited and I was thinking maybe there's a lower high confirmation and you get your lower high confirmation. So this is actually, I think, a very good setup here because it confirms fail breakout. You can tell prices try to break out of the range. It couldn't flash back down, close below the EMA. Now the EMA admittedly isn't as important right now in the trading range, but it is nice to see just an extra little piece of 
confirmation that it closed below. It's a very strong bearish bar, broke out, top of the trading range, it's enough room to get down. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't trading because I said I didn't want to break my uh, three loss rule. I mean, I've done it before, but I lost three rows, three in a row, and I just wanted to just be more careful. Price looks like it flashed down and it would have worked. Then it continues to chop, kind of grinds up. There's no clear entry because there's only new low here. You only have a first entry, then a second entry short, but it's below, above the EMA. The signal bar is terrible. You don't really even get a higher low or lower, excuse me, a lower high and continues chopping around. It's getting close to the end of the day because the last 10 minutes. And of course, I don't want to trade the last 10 minutes because it gets really whippy. I mean, just a point. In fact, if you look at this, this is the last minute. This is at 1259 Pacific Standard. These candles are all made in one minute. So this is in the span of one minute. These are 2,000 tick, tick candles. So it was just a lot of action happening right here. It's easy to get whipsawed and stopped out. So I decided, well, I always decide not to trade when it gets that close to the end of the day. and Just kind of lift the fight another day. Fortunately, I got three losses. So that is unfortunate. And I decided that after the third loss, you know, I wasn't in tune with the market. Even if I do get in tune later, I have to stay disciplined because I know if I took a fourth loss for sure, I would have probably gotten triggered and feel terrible. Not that I wasn't already. And it was just more of a discipline thing. It was like, hey, you took three shots, you lost. It's time to kind of wrap it up for the day. Yes, you know, there might be an awesome setup later. And that's just the penalty of being impatient and just uh, taking foolish trades. So that's how I saw the charts. Hopefully that was helpful.